Welcome back to the home of all things ballroom dance. Okay, today's video is a follow-up um, on some fabulous comments one of our ballroom dance friends um, left on one of many videos I've posted on different ways that we can stand out and place our best in competition. And um, I so appreciate every time you guys share something. It's helpful. I love your questions. I love when you include information that I omitted. Um, and often I post follow-up videos sharing great questions you have and, and info you've shared. So I definitely want to touch on um, these fabulous suggestions that Charles added to my list of what you can do to place first. Um, okay, so next on the list, if you missed my last video, I'll do a link uh, in the description, but let's continue. Um, Charles says, of course, characterization is key to getting the results you would like from the judges in the dance heats not just technique and memorization of the routines alone. So in tango, for instance, add some syncopated staccato movements, especially in the linking actions. In the waltz, any hopping actions will go against you, don't do it. Um, so from my perspective, this is why um, it's really important to take private lessons because everyone dances a little differently um, and your coach can make sure that your movement um, is expressed on the floor in a way that is consistent with that dance. And we master that in the syllabus, in the bronze, in the silver, and the gold. And then um, it gets to be super fun when you get to the open categories where you can really dance anything you want, but the movement must be in the character of that dance. So you would not want to dance a really slow legato tango. We might have some accent figures, maybe like an Argentine head roll or something, but overall, those are only accent pieces. Each style of dance has a very specific um, kind of list of elements that make it look like it should. <laughs> um, now, this is another reason I also don't suggest ripping off other people's choreography from YouTube. Your coach knows your movement the best and will give you choreography for so that you will show best on the comp floor. Okay, so some people I find do great syncopated figures. And so I'm gonna put a boatload of theirs, those in compared to another couple who is, say, has a great um, ability to pause and freeze and show light and shade and shape. Um, and you can kind of mix up these figures in their choreography in the way that best emphasizes their strengths. As I've shared before, if you're competing on that TV show, American Idol, and you are the world's most gifted um, rap artist, you really shouldn't go on there and sing an opera for your tryout number. Um, you'd probably be better than most people, but why not emphasize your strengths, okay? Um, now, if you're wanting to learn more about the character of each dance, that is like 50 other videos. Let me save you the time. There is a fabulous book out there. It is by, um, I believe he's Dutch. Um, his name is Maximilian Winkelhuis. Forgive me if I'm messing up the pronunciation. Winkelhuis. W-I-N-K-E-L. H-U-I-S. And he wrote an incredible book called Dancing to Your Maximum. This is back in 2001. Unfortunately, it's no longer in print. It can be hard to find. Um, occasionally, it pops up on Amazon and eBay. So if you're interested in reading this book, it really addresses character of each dance. So nothing really about um, here's the syllabus, dance it this way, 
put your leg this way. It's really about how you can emphasize that showmanship and represent each dance on the floor artistically like the judges are gonna want to see it, okay? Now, I did check Amazon today and there was currently a Chinese edition of this book. So if you're in China or speak Chinese, good, great, you're in luck today. And that was $47.19 today on Amazon. Um, I'll include a link in the description in case you're interested. I imagine, you know, these things, um, roll through inventory really fast. So unless you hop on it, you're probably not gonna get it, but fingers crossed, keep on looking. Okay, next up, related to this, Charles brings up the facial expression. And I have shared um, a video on this in the past of things we can do. Um, I think especially for beginners, this is a, a tough nut to crack because we're so, you know, micromanaging. What are the beats? Oh, what's my choreography? Is this a heel or a toe? Um, and it can be a lot to manage. Um, one real easy kind of treatment for that is while you're practicing, while you're taking your lesson, while you're social dancing, practice the expression that you would like to have on your face. That way when you're in the comp, you don't need to think about this on top of everything else. It will happen supernaturally. And as I shared on my Dancing Queen um, videos, um, I suggest really emoting the feeling that that type of dance gives you. I feel sometimes, maybe I'm biased, in tango, for example, I see um, dancers take on an affect that to me is not really how I feel when I hear the music. Just like uh, they call it the fish lips, like the, um, and my suggestion would be don't worry so much about what everyone else is doing but that you are projecting an emotion and what you're feeling with that music. Because you know what? All those judges are ballroom dancing. We're feeling it too. And it just like speaks to our soul when you hear um, like in your heart that they're enjoying that dance, that they're feeling what I'm feeling with the bum, 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 you know, with those tango beats or, or whatever dance. Um, style you're doing at the time on that floor, okay? Okay, uh, I'll share a link to that facial expressions video if you missed that. So check out the description if you wanna see that in more detail. Okay, next up, um, uh, um, Charles says matching costumes can help. A great example is the Latin dance couple of the Filippos. If you and your partner wear especially the same color or colors, it seems like it forces the dancers as if they were a single unit. Um, okay, so related to this, when you are ordering your costumes, definitely consult your pro and consult your costume designer. So very first costume I bought, I saw um, a lady dancer on the floor. And I was like, oh, I must have that dress. I'll oh, just get it a different color. Like I copied it down meticulously with a drawing. Um, I sent it to my gown designer and she was like, Sunny, that's not going to work the best for you. <laughs> and I so appreciate that because now that I know more about like what dresses are gonna work well for which body shape and which natural style of movement. Oh, thank heavens a pro stepped in and stopped me from stepping in front of that train. <laughs> You're gonna spend thousands of dollars on a costume. Hey, at least make it dance well on you. Um, and um, although Charles didn't go into this, um, I feel that although the matching costumes don't make you dance better with the partner or follow or lead better, I absolutely feel that when the judges and the audience look at you, it um, helps give that picture in their mind that you are a couple and you are dancing together. Um, and I love that. Um, okay, I have a personal story for you. Costumes do make a big difference. Um, and I know many ladies like to wear black because they feel it's slimming. You know what, guys? It's not a um, Weight Watchers contest out there. You want to stand out. Uh, that is going to be a big challenge on that comp floor, especially a big comp like a house star ball where you're up against all these couples. How do I just get seen in those early rounds? 
Um, and so I suggest vibrant colors. Um, real story, I um, have a friend who at that time, we were in the amateur championship level. And um, although she was first in the US um, national rankings at championship, she never placed as well as some of the other couples in the, in the World Cup. So the UK Open, the International, Blackpool, etc. And our coaches were like, you know what? You're a great dancer, but we can't see you on the floor. Legit. Um, and they, they were not a very tall couple as well, so that probably worked a little bit against them. Um, but anyway, uh, so <laughs> their approach that year in competition, <laughs> they said, we're going to find the ugliest costume we can for you so they can't miss you. <laughs> and you know what, guys? They succeeded. This was the most horrible gown any of us had ever seen, but we all knew kind of what the shtick was. So, you know, we, we, you know, had fun joking about it with her, but you know what guys, sure enough, <laughs> she placed ahead of all those couples that here in Europe. So, um, you know, there's something to be said for just showing up well, definitely when you order a costume, you know, consult your pro. Um, if you're doing prime, say if you're doing American smooth, Hey, Throw yourself a bone. Just buy, uh, you know, a satin tie that matches your professional lady's costume. It'll just look super polished on the floor like you're showing up to win and not just participate. Okay. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Thank you so much. Charles. Love all of your guys' comments. Can't I just, and, and I totally agree with everything he said. Now, if you guys have additional um, suggestions on things that have um, worked well for you in competition, please comment below. If you disagree with something I'm saying, hey, feel free to share. I don't delete comments. I'm just one person. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Hope that's been helpful. Um, if you enjoy all things ballroom dance, hey, hit that subscribe channel button. We are a worldwide community of ballroom dance friends here. We all share that kind of love that we feel and excitement and bonding and um, adrenaline, endorphins with ballroom dancing. Um, most of us here compete, not all of us. Um, but regardless, we're all striving to be the best dancers we can be. So happy dancing to you. And I look forward to seeing you first thing in the morning. Thanks for joining me today. Bye guys.